Hey guys, Brickin' It here and welcome back to another Tuesday's Big Review. Now, this week I'm going to try and attempt to review the LEGO Haunted House set, which literally just came out last month. This is by far the biggest set I've done on this channel, but I'm going to give it a go and hopefully you guys will like the video. Okay guys, so here is the set and I absolutely love this set. I'm just going to say that off the bat. It's an amazing set, one of my favourite sets of this year. This and Barracuda Bay I think are absolutely brilliant. But as you can see, this set is so big, it doesn't even fit into my, my white backdrop. So that's why I kind of can't show it all. But I'll just show you very quickly. I'll tilt it up to show you the, the tower feature. There it is. It's absolutely massive and it's really impressive in real life. So that's obviously the ride part of it. And then as you go down, you see all these really high roof pitched roof. And then the Manor von Baron prints there. And then the minifigs at the front. So I'm gonna go through the minifigs first. I'm gonna go around the building and then we're gonna get into it and I'll try and show you as much of the kind of the Easter eggs that I know about in this set. I know there's so many more, but I'm not gonna go in too much into it because I know there's videos out there that kind of go through all of those anyway. So starting off, here is the, the ghost figures. And these are really, really cool. They actually have, both have double-sided faces. So you've got the uh, sad and the happy. Other than that, they're pretty plain. But these guys are very different to the other ghosts, the original ghosts. and it's because these are supposed to be actors playing ghosts, I kind of get. That's what Lego was saying anyway. But I think they still could have used the old one. And I wish these guys were glow in the dark. That would have been really, really nice. But we have two of those guys. Then we also have these, the twins, as they're called, with this top hat. No double-sided face for these, because obviously the top hat's visible all the way around. But we do have this really nice printed uh, waistcoat with the blue kind of highlights. And that's on the back as well. So you get two of those guys. Then a lot of these are just kind of normal Lego City characters. I think this hair piece is a little bit rarer, but it's really nice. I like the, uh, the pendant on the, um, the purple uh, cardigan, but this is a pretty normal piece. And she does have a double-sided face, so this is her scary. And I've done that for a reason, because she's going to be going on the ride. And that's her other facial expression. So she's going to be one of the ones going on the ride that I'm going to show you when I demonstrate it. Here's the other one that's going to be going on the ride. Again, pretty normal Lego City stuff. That's her scared face, but she does also have a happy face. So obviously that's before and after, or before and during the ride, I suppose. Then we get this character. Now this one was very interesting because this character actually has NB on her jacket and also squids. So I'll show you the back. This is actually a piece that's been used in a lot of hidden side sets. And NB stands for Newbury School. So that means that the haunted house must play a part in the Newbury kind of the hidden side stuff must be in the same universe as this, which is pretty cool. But again, she's pretty nice. She does have, uh, oh, she doesn't have a double-sided face. She sees obviously one of the characters that doesn't have a double-sided face. But pretty nice minifigure anyway. Now, this one here is the special unique one in the set. And that's because this is actually the sig figure, the designer of this Lego set. He doesn't have a double-sided face. He's got that really nice hair piece. I do really like that hair piece and I love the... Uh, the printing on the face with the sideburns is really cool. And his jacket's pretty cool as well. And then next we have, last but not least, is a wheelchair guy, which is really, really cool. I like this because they've actually made the actual house a wheelchair accessible, which I think is really cool. So he's got the ticket. And if you guys don't realize this, just really quickly, is the ticket's 0937. But if you look at the top version of it, it spells Lego upside down. It's quite nice. I love those little Easter eggs. I do like these wheelchair um Pieces, I think I've said that before, these are really cool and just adds a lot of uh, playability into the city as well, a bit more diversity. And again, he has two faces, smirking one and the scared one. So there we go. So there are all the minifigs. I'm going to move them to one side now so you can actually take a look at the set itself. Okay, so starting off the front of the building, over here we have the disabled access, which is really nice. And then these steps that go in. Obviously, these have these studs showing, but that's so you can have people walking up the steps or having one of the terrible twins kind of like there guiding you into the haunted house. And then on the side here, you probably can't see it, but it's actually a tiny little um, turning knob and you can actually open the, the doors with it, which is really cool. Really haunted kind of feel. I really like that playability. So then going around the front, you have this little graveyard here. And this is just meant to represent a graveyard. It's obviously supposed to be a theme park ride. So it's not got a real graveyard. It's just kind of what you get. You usually have these kind of over the top fake stuff around to kind of give you that scared feel when you're entering the actual ride. So they've got a fake pumpkin here, a fake gravestone here with a baton, that's pretty cool. Some vines and dead plants. 
And then this is the controversial piece here. Now it's controversial because this is actually an illegal build technique. It's actually clipped on top through two studs like that, which is considered illegal. But I forgive it, I think it's pretty cool. And then um, also what's cool about this is this is a printed piece. And that TC, you guys will probably know, but it's actually a famous ex-Lego designer now called Diego Caterino, who designed the uh, ship in the bottle as, as well as a lot of other nice idea sets. So I think he was apparently helped out quite a bit on this set before he left. So they kind of wanted to immortalize him in the set, which I think is really, really nice. Other than that, you have this printed piece here, which actually I'm sure is referenced to an old vampire set, but I'm not too sure, so don't quote me on that. We get these dark gray frogs, which are supposed to be gargoyles, which they really, really liked to talk about in the set. I'll take one of them off just to show you. Here he is. So they are just the normal frog, but in gray. Quite nice. Quite a nice little addition, but I think they have done that before, so I don't know why they're too kind of up on that. Then you also have this printed Manor Von Baron uh, tile, and this is a little bit loose because that's actually a play feature inside. That's a button that you press. And so I'll show you that when we get inside the, uh, the building. And then if we slowly kind of move this up, you can just see the stair, the uh, actual lift take place there. And nothing really stands out. That's exactly the same piece there as further down that we saw. But this is obviously, these are the doors and they open when the ride goes up. So I'll show you that quickly. As you pull it towards the top, it actually then opens the doors like so. To show you the, uh, the ride people, they'll probably be looking at the entire kind of theme park and everything they can see on the horizon and then it drops them down. So that's the play feature of the ride as well. So rotating the model around, the side has nothing really too fancy. This is obviously just the hinge is where the, it opens up because it opens from the middle. Nothing too fancy here, just shows you all the nice windows. And then as you can see here, this is actually the chain that goes along the whole back of the ride. And this is the mechanism which I was just showing you before. So basically you have two levers here. This is the one that you rotate around to actually get the ride going around. The ride connects to these little pieces here. That pulls the car up. And then the top opens at the very top. And then if you carry on pushing this, it will drop. But interestingly, there's also a piece there's also a second piece here, which is like a clutch lever. And if you flick this left or right, that also drops the ride. And that's how you use the two power function motors, which I don't currently have at the moment. So that'll be something that I'll have to do in a later video when they come through from Bricklink, because even Lego is 100% sold out of them. So other than that, this side has nothing really special either. Just another hinge for opening the sides. And it just has some windows here. And again, the windows on the sides. And that is pretty much it from the exterior of this awesome, awesome model. But obviously that's not the best bit about the, this actual set, it's the inside and all the kind of Easter eggs that go with it. So opening up this model shows you an absolute loads of little Easter eggs from all past sets, which I just think is absolutely ace. I didn't even collect any of these sets when I was younger, I could never afford them. So they weren't something that's nostalgic to me and I still really enjoy this set. I think it's really, really cool to have all these kind of old references to Lego. So I kind of mentioned some of them, but if you wanted to have a more in-depth detail, there's lots of reviews and, and videos saying all the little areas on this. But okay, so a lot of these Easter egg bits here are actually references to the old sets that Von Baron was actually part of. So I'm just going to kind of mention some of them. There's the, I think this is called the obelisk down here. We have the Sphinx head. We have some actual old kind of Egyptian style heads over here. This is a haunted painting that Von Baron's in. And if you press that front piece here that I was on about before, the... Uh, the, the Manor Von Baron button, it actually glows and there is a sphinx, kind of evil sphinx head kind of behind it showing that this is haunted from that jewel or something. So you have a lot of other stuff that apparently is also from the Ogle sets, the old ones, because I think this is actually Ogle spelt in um, backwards in hieroglyphics, so Lego spelt backwards, sorry, which is Ogle, which is obviously the, uh, the evil sets back then. You have a lot of references to that stuff here, but like I think that's the Orb of Ogle, this is, a, I believe it's actually an old Tetris style game that Lego made, which is actually, if you take him out, this is two parts of him and he sticks together, which is really weird. Got some more references over here and here. And then you have this hanging skeleton, which in the set, no one actually knows what this is. Even the set itself says this could be the, the, the third twin that died because he's also got a top hat on, but uh, we don't know. We don't know what that is at all. And then obviously there's like some sort of sacrifice chamber here as well, which is pretty cool. So 
lots of nice details inside and I think a lot of the sets, if you really wanted to get into this and you're really into LEGO, you'd, you'll know all these references already. But obviously, if you're not, I think it still looks a fantastic model for like a haunted theme. And, and the fact that it's a theme park that's also like reference to LEGO, I think that's absolutely ace. If you're making a LEGO theme kind of park, I think this would go absolutely perfectly into that. Okay, so in the middle here, we have the Manor Von Baron cart. And this actually clips on via the back, so you can just unclip it quite easily. I'll just show you there. This is actually an old cart piece, I believe. It's used in older sets anyway, but it's this nice blue. It has a nice printed piece here. And then it has like a ball bar as the uh, the latch down to make sure you're not going to fall out of the ride. So, I will get the two characters that I was on about earlier with the two scared faces. So you have these two, two ladies here from the set. And they just literally clip in via the bottom here. So, I'm going to raise their hands up and put them inside the carriage. Like so. And then the other one as well. like so and then you can pull the ball bar down on them and i just have the the uh the arms higher up so it's a bit easier to kind of get them to look scared and i think they fit in a lot better as well so then this clips on the back via this clip here into the ride like that and that's it that is it and then you just kind of turn the crank at the back which i've shown you before and you can see that they this seems to be clicking a lot more than usual though and that's it, that is... Okay, so that is it on the Haunted House. And I absolutely love the set, I think it's brilliant. I really want to get the motors for this. Um, at some point, I think, when I do that, I will do an actual update of what I feel of this set and show you how the power-up functions and stuff go. But yeah, it's a very, very expensive set. If you do manage to get hold of one, I think it's an absolutely brilliant build. It took us three live streams to do, lots of fun, and it's really nice. And just it just looks really cool when you're kind of adding all the extra bits inside the, the, uh, the haunted house and stuff. But let me know your guys' thoughts on this set down below if you think that it's kind of too overpriced or you just don't like it, because I know a lot of people compare this to the older haunted house. But for me personally, I love this set and it's probably my top set at the moment for this year. So that's probably a bit of a controversial statement, but that's yeah, kind of where I come on it. But I do feel like these are getting more and more pricey. Okay, so take a quick another look at the set. As you can see, it's a Creator Expert one. It was released this year. It's 3,231 pieces and it does contain 10 minifigures. So that's really, really good for the price of £210 in the UK or $250 in America and €230. Euros in Europe, so it does have a really good price per piece of 7.5p or 7.7 cents in America or 7.1 cents in Europe. So I do kind of think this is quite a decent deal for the actual price. It's very expensive, but that with these kind of massive creator experts, that's what you're gonna be getting. So, so I still definitely recommend this set. It's the best set of the year and it definitely gets my two thumbs up. If you enjoyed the vid, then if you haven't already, please like and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. And as always, keep bricking it.